Hi everyone. Today I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide on how you can secure your MCP servers using OAuth 2.1 authentication powered by Fast API and Scalekit. So if you're building AI tools, integrating APIs, or just want modern, robust auth for your MCP server, then this tutorial is for you. Now, just recently, MCP officially launched the support for OAuth 2.1, which is the official auth standard for MCP servers. So the entire idea is that earlier when MCP as a protocol was launched, there was not really a solid way of being able to do authentication for your applications, for your MCP servers. So of course, uh, since OAuth 2.1 has been also applied in traditional software, we can apply the same kind of concept into our MCP servers. Because as we know that MCP server, uh, or if we talk about the model context protocol, it provides authorization capabilities at the transport layer. And this specification with OAuth 2.1 defines the authorization flow for HTTP-based transports. So you'll not only understand what that means, but how you can leverage a product like Skillkit for achieving that. Given the fact that the MCP spec now mandates OAuth 2.1 for remote MCP servers, meaning you need to issue, scope, and verify tokens, handle dynamic clients, and log which agent is acting on behalf of which user, that's a lot to get right. And that's where Skillkit comes in. It's a modular drop-in auth layer for MCP servers and not a full stack auth replacement. Which means that whether you're using Firebase, Clerk, or even Auth0, Scalekit plugs in seamlessly to handle the OAuth 2.1 flow for your MCP endpoints. It comes with a set of great value props. First one, as we mentioned, providing a standard and a compliant production-ready way to achieve OAuth 2.1 for MCP. Uh, and then it comes with built-in scopes and permission enforcement and you get full audit visibility knowing which agent called your MCP and on behalf of which particular user. So in order to get started, you just basically click on start for free, you create a, a scale kit account. Then what you do is that when you want to authenticate or authorize your MCP servers, you simply go to the MCP servers tab and here you add a new MCP uh, in order to basically do that. If you're having a remote MCP server, then, or you're using the remote HTTP protocol, then as transport layer, you can add the resource identifier. So this is a unique uh, resource identifier. Uh, you can get to define what scopes you want, um, which are, and you can also then enable a dynamic registration. And once you have done that, you just go ahead and save this and you get this couple of things, which is the meta data endpoint URL and this resource meta data JSON. And we'll also talk more specifically about how this kind of correlates to our entire flow. So. The way that Scalekit essentially works is, um, which is kind of shown here, is that you first start off with um, the client. So the client initially sends an initial request uh, and gets a 401 unauthorized with some metadata. So the idea is that since you want to secure our uh, MCP servers, if you didn't have any authentication at that time, you would have received um, you would have been able to directly run your tools from that particular MCP server. But if you want to add auth, if you try to directly uh, use the tool, you should get an unauthorized request. So this is where the client will send the initial request. They will get a 401 unauthorized access with metadata. So what happens is then the client will fetch the metadata uh, from your well-known endpoint and finds the information for the auth server. Then what would happen is that we would create our auth middleware to validate the auth token. So in this case, um, the client will register if allowed, authenticates and gets the JWT. And then the client sends the next request with the JWT or the bearer token. Now, in case the uh, token is present, so the server will validate the token with the issuer, audience and the scope. So if the token is present, we validate the token and then we end it. Otherwise, if the token is not present, we return a 401 with the URI to our well-known endpoint. So this kind of gives you an idea of the overall flow of how uh, you can essentially add your entire end-to-end -end cycle for authentication and authorization of um, your MCP servers when you're sending in a request with the help of Skillkit and how we can manage that. So now let's take a look at what we are going to be doing. So in our case, the first thing that you'll see is that we have some settings over here in our config where we have described our entire Skillkit auth. So here we have set up all the different environment variables. Uh, we have uh, a validation that we are doing on the startup that requires all of your environment variables to be set. And we are using Skillkit as our auth provider, as we have already mentioned. And you could have multiple APIs depending on what you're using. Uh, in this case, we are using an XIMCP server, uh, which has a set of different tools. And we'll also show the demo for that later. So now let's talk about our middleware, right? So uh, let's talk about the actual auth middleware. What's happening here is that first, what it does is that 
we have a request interception where the middleware intercepts each and every request except the when known endpoints which need to be publicly accessible for the OAuth discovery. Then what we are doing is that over here we are getting our token extraction then we are basically going ahead and doing a request analysis and this is really crucial for our request data because uh, when we analyze the request to determine if it's a tool call which requires some additional scopes that you define instead of scale kit and then the next thing is that you basically do a scoped based authorization in which you define your um, required scopes and then you finally go ahead and validate that particular token with scale kit and we have some basic error handling that we have implemented and our main application logic is here in main.py so here uh, we start off with our context lib uh, lifecycle management. This is great for the MCP session manager, which will handle all of the connection and lifecycle. And then it ensures that the MCP server is ready before handling the requests. And then if we talk about our main configuration, uh, let's take a look at our critical when known endpoint. So this is really important because this endpoint is crucial for your OAuth discovery. So it's standard uh, compliance for uh, following the RFC for the OAuth authorization server metadata. And it also gives you the client discovery, which allows MCP MCP clients to automatically discover authentication requirements and it also provides you a dynamic um, it essentially also provides your dynamic configuration because the metadata that comes from your environment variables for flexibility and then we are setting up our MCP server so we get our streamable HTTP app from our MCP server we add our authentication middleware that intercepts all of the requests and then we get our we mount our MCP server that will handle requests that pass authentication. Now let's also take a look at our exa.py. So here uh, we are initializing a new MCP server for exa, uh, which is an LM provider. And you know, we are using fast MCP. So we have a bunch of different tools here, a uh, total of three different tools that we'll be using. Now, the entire idea is that the complete OAuth flow is that uh, if we look at what is actually happening, so the client discovers the authorization server the client will redirect the user to the authorization server. So in this case, when you're using the app, uh, the client will redirect you to ScaleKit to authenticate with ScaleKit. And then the uh, authorization uh, you know, server redirects back with the authorization code and the client exchanges the code for the access token. The client will make an API call with the bearer token and the middleware validates the token using ScaleKit. And when the MCP uh, client connects, it first basically calls the well-known OAuth protected MCP so that it returns a metadata JSON where you get the authorization endpoint. Um, so we can also quickly take a look at how that basically works. Where it basically returns the metadata like authorization endpoint, token endpoint, the scopes, and then you do the validation and you are able to get the scope based authorization. So now we'll proceed with the example as well. In the terminal, let's take a look at how that works. So when an MCP client connects, it first calls the uh, well-known endpoint. So here you can see that when we try to directly access the MCP server, we get an 401. So here, if I go to the network tab, I'll be able to see that I get this particular authentication here. So that's both metadata. So if I go to this particular link, I just quickly go here. What you're now going to be seeing is that this returns this metadata that includes your authorization serve endpoint, your uh, token endpoint, all of these different information like resource, and then the resource documentation, uh, which then what will happen is that the next step after this would be the token validation process, because here you'll be able to take a look at all of your resource information. So you can see that that's your authorization server and the kind of bearer methods that are supported. So we'll be using the header one and so you essentially just ensure that you have a proper bearer token. So in this case, the next step is that once you have determined that by using the MCP and uh, getting that information, you can basically go ahead and generate a new auth bearer token with this particular endpoint, which is uh, auth token. So this generates your uh, token and then you can authenticate it to and basically add it as part of your auth, add the bearer token and add that token that you have just generated. And this should be able to help you to be able to authenticate. So generally that's what basically happens that you get all of the information about uh, the metadata with the help of the well-known uh, endpoint because that is the one that is publicly accessible but then other requests are intercepted and you need to have the proper bearer token that you can generate. Uh, now normally of course you could have done this with uh, manually the scale kit would be prompting you to log in or authenticate with scale kit so that you can get that bearer token and verify that JWT token. Else you can also use an endpoint like this one that will enables that enables you to do the same. Let's take a look at our authenticated EXA MCP server in action and how it's powered by ScaleKit. So first, let's go ahead and run our server. So this runs on port number 10,000. One thing that we're going to be doing is that I'm also setting up an NROC so that I get this URL and I'll be basically registering 
uh, my MCP server on scale gateway this ingrock address. So if you'll just copy this, you already see that we have registered it over here. So this is our MCP server with the user resource identifier slash MCP. So if I just click on edit, you can see here the permissions that we have given it, the scopes and permissions, and of course the resource metadata associated with this particular server. So that's our MCP server that we have registered. Now, in order to use this, the reason we did that is that so that we can also interact with this MCP server with our Windsurf client. So here you can see that right now I'm on Windsurf and we can manage our MCP servers here. So I have this pre-configured config that we can just use to um, add to our MCP config.json. And in this case, the name of the MCP server is demo ingrock and it's doing nothing but it's using the MCP remote to uh, hit the call to our uh, ingrock instance slash mcp so of course it's still like basically interacting with your local 10,000 but you're just forwarding it over via ingrock so let's go ahead and save this and now let's refresh our mcp servers once Sentinel it has already authenticated uh, with the help of scale kit and now since we have added the authentication we should be able to see the list of all of the different tools that will be available for us. So here as well, you should be able to see that the all the requests have been 200 because we have successfully been able to authenticate. Um, and then we should be able to see the list of all these tools come up over here and then we can test it out. So again, just to remind, we have a total of three different tools. We have, we're using EXA, which is uh, an LLM scraper. So here we have make so you can see that we have XR search. That's our first MCP tool. Then we have another MCP tool, a couple of other MCP tools like XR get contents. And finally, we have one which is XR find symptom. So these are the three different tools. So just remind that this is our config. So here you can see that we have all of the three tools that are available to us. Let's try this out. So I can say using the demo in rock server share the latest news on Apple iPhone 16. Let's see what it does. So it starts to plan it out. In this case, the agent that we're using is GPT-5. So we'll use the appropriate tool call depending on the question or the intent of the user. So in this case, it is able to, in fact, like use the Engrock XR search, which has now been, of course, you know, we have put the authorization with the help of Skillkit. So once the MCP server, like the client has been able to get, so once the client has been able to get proper access, then we'll be able to use the call lens. Over here, you can see that we're also using and sending the appropriate details and we're also getting the responses as well. So this is all happening with the help of the tool call that we're making this properly authenticated. If you were to try to use the same authentication here, so you can see that if I go to localhost 10,000, it says it's unauthorized and if I, if I try to go to mcp it will still be unauthorized so we have been able to like go ahead and leverage our scale kit to be able to authenticate and that's a quick overview of this particular demo